This is VOA News. Reporting by remote, I'm David Byrd. Vote counting continues in the U.S. presidential election. We get the latest from AP's Ed Donahue. Joe Biden's victory in Wisconsin got him closer. It's clear that we're winning enough states to reach 270 electoral votes needed to win the presidency. Biden says he realizes not all the votes have been counted. I'm not here to declare that we've won, but I am here to report when the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners. The Trump campaign wants a recount in Wisconsin and is suing to stop the counting in Michigan and Pennsylvania. Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani says the problem is observer access. The observers can be 20 or 30 feet away never able to see the ballot itself. Giuliani says he might file a national lawsuit to expose what he calls the corruption of the Democratic Party. I'm Ed Donahue. The head of Britain's coronavirus vaccine task force says data evaluating the efficacy and safety of the two most advanced candidates should be available in early December. AP's Charles de Ledesma reports. Kate Bingham has told a parliamentary committee the data on the two vaccine candidates developed by Oxford University and AstraZeneca and Pfizer and BioNTech should be available by then. After that, the vaccine candidates will need regulatory approval. Bingham says if the developers get that, we have the possibility of deploying by year end. Robin Shattock, one of the scientists behind another vaccine developed by Imperial College London, says it's possible several vaccines will be needed to stop the pandemic. Charles de la Desma, London. Stocks rallied on Wall Street Wednesday with the Dow gaining 1.34 percent. The S&P rose by 2.2 percent. The Nasdaq added 3.85 percent. This is VOA News. Austria's interior minister, Karl Nehammer, said Wednesday that video evidence confirms that a gunman who killed four people in Vienna on Monday acted alone. However, Nehammer told a news conference there had been a problem with Austria's handling of information provided by Slovakia after the attacker attempted to buy ammunition in the neighboring country. Nehammer, who praised the excellent response of the security services, also said the country needed to look at how it handled people on its danger list. The 20-year-old suspect was released from prison early after convincing a de-radicalization program that he held no jihadist beliefs. South Korea's military said Wednesday it had taken into custody a North Korean man who crossed the heavily fortified border into the South, prompting an urgent search operation. Reuters' Libby Hogan reports. The man was first spotted crossing the barbed wire fence at around 7.30 p.m. Tuesday night, according to local media, and was then found about 10 a.m. the next morning on the eastern side of the demilitarized zone that divides the Koreas. That's according to the South's Joint Chiefs of Staff, who said in a statement that an investigation is being planned. It comes as South Korea resumed tours to the southern part of the demilitarized zone on Wednesday, after the tours were put on pause in October last year after an outbreak of the deadly African swine fever in the north. However, Unification Minister Lee In-yong made no mention of the North Korean man when celebrating the tour restart. Lee called for restoring relations with the North and a recovery of inter-Korean hotlines that were severed back in June. That's Reuters' Libby Hogan. Ethiopia's government has ordered the army into the Tigray region and declared a six-month state of emergency after the prime minister accused the Tigray government of attacking a federal military base. Simon Marks reports from Addis Ababa. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed said military operations began in the northern Tigray area on Wednesday morning after he accused the region's ruling Tigray People's Liberation Front of orchestrating a raid on a strategic military base. However, government officials have been tight-lipped about the size or the goal of the operation and whether there have been any casualties or arrests of TPLF officials. Internet and telephone lines were shut down in Tigray as of late Wednesday afternoon. Relations between Tigray and Abiy's government have been fraught since he took office in 2018 and sidelined the TPLF, which ruled the government in a coalition for nearly three decades. Simon Marks for VOA News, Ethiopia. You can find more at our website. Reporting by remote, I'm David Bird, VOA News.